Hello and welcome to lesson four of this free traditional singing course. This course is sponsored by Gasyard Fela. Uh, my name is Davy Stewart and today I'm going to be teaching you the song The Mountains of Pomeroy. Oh, the day was done and bright and fair. And the Sang in the sky, and beneath she bent her dark brown hair, we a blithe look in her eye. For who beyond on the gay green wood is awaiting her we joy oh who but her gallant ran her down on Full often in the twilight hour, full often in the twilight brown, they met there in that woodland bower where streams come trickling down for they did have as a true love no man can e'er destroy for no tyrant's chains bound ran her down on the mountains of Pomeroy. My love, she cried, I am so of my cruel kin for you for they've tracked you in the woodland rain and all the valley My parents curse when he are named your life they would destroy for beware they say of Renardine on My love, he cried, be not afraid, all the foeman's force on me, for no chin shall bind what would be free so leave your crew can be behind while the lark it sings we joy 
ای So The Mountains of Pomeroy is quite an old song. It was originally, I believe, set to in March, so it would have been a lot quicker than the way that we're going to be learning it and the way that I sing it. The way that a lot of people actually sing it now, a lot of people play the tune as a march and sing the song as a slow air. And it varies a lot in terms of small differences in the lyrics from one person singing to the next. The last verse I completely reconstructed, so nobody else will be singing it that way apart from me and whoever learns it from this. The air will always be the same tune as the march, so the tune has stayed the same. It is called the Mountains of Pomeroy, that's what that tune is. Where people use traditional airs to write other songs, so where I talked before about a lot of tunes can have uh, different songs written to them. I don't believe there's anything else written to the Mountains of Pomeroy apart from the Mountains of Pomeroy because it's quite a standout song. So I don't think anybody would think to write anything else to the Mountains of Pomeroy. I might be wrong, there might be Sean Moon or somebody might have written something to it, but I'm not sure. So we'll crack on and learn it. I'll get the lyrics up in front of me here. If you'd like a PDF copy of anything that I put below the video, you can send me a wee private message with your email on it and I can send it on to you. I'm drinking a lot of water because my voice is a bit wrecked. I don't know why, but it is. We'll crack through it anyway. Right, so we'll break this song down. The day was dawning bright and fair, the lark sang in the sky. And the maid she bound her dark brown hair with a blithe look in her eye. I'll sing it and I want you to listen to me singing it and then do just the same way we've been doing it before. And then you sing with me, but I'll tell you whenever you sing with me anyway. So we'll just take the first part of it. Oh, the day was dawn and bright and fair. Sing that with me. Oh, the day was dawn and bright and fair. One more time. Oh, the day was dawn and bright and fair. And the next part, the lark sang in the sky. The lark sang in the sky. Sing that with me. The lark sang in the sky. One more time. The lark sang in the sky. And we'll put those two bits together. I'll sing it three together and then I want you to sing three with me. And again, we're stripping back the ornamentation just to get the tune of it. Oh, the day was dawn and bright and fair. The lark sang in the sky. And you're holding that last note. So sing that with me. Oh, the day was dawn and bright and fair. And the lark sang in the sky. So we in that last note, sky, that one word goes up, <clears throat> so it starts off with ska and goes up to I, so we'll try that by itself, sky, and sing that with me, sky, and one more time, sky, okay, great stuff, so we'll sing that once more, three, Oh, the day was dawn and bright and fair. The lark sang in the sky. And the next one. 
next part. And me chi tell dark brown hair. Sing that with me. And me chi tell dark brown hair. One more time. And me chi tell dark brown hair and the next part of it is we a blight looking array I'm going to keep that bit of ornamentation in and I want you to try and copy it as best you can we a blight looking array and that's her I so if you practice that bit her I and that becomes her I we'll slow it down here we a blaze slogan her I so that's a very slow form of it I want you to practice that slow bit of it practice it just pause the video and just practice that a couple of times and then once you get it slow, try and speed it up a bit. So, we blaze Logan array. So we'll put those two bits together. And me chi bound her dark brown hair. We blaze Logan. Alright. Okay, we will put the two segments that we've just learnt together with that wee bit of extra ornamentation. So, oh, the day was a dawn and bright and fair, the lark sang in the sky. And me she bound her dark brown hair with a blight looking array. Okay, we'll do that one more time and then we'll break down the next part. So, one, two, three. Oh, the day was a dawn and bright. Unfair, the lark sang in the sky, and me she bent her dark brown hair with blaze Logan array. We'll go on to the next part of that first, which goes on to a slightly higher pitch. For who beyond the gay green wood? Sing that with me. For who beyond the gay green wood? I'm singing the, but it should be that. For who beyond that gay green wood? And then the next part of that section is Is a wheat in her we joy? So that's an extremely slow version of that, so we'll sing that with me. Is a wit in her way joy. One more time. Is a wit in her way joy. This is quite a calm, rhythmic song. Because it's a rhythmic song, it has that underline and power in it that you can do certain things with it. You shouldn't really belt out the entire song, but you should pick parts that you can belt out. 
uh, to emphasize certain areas that might make sense it might not so we'll sing those two lines together I'll sing it and then sing with me for who beyond that gay green wood is waiting her way joy Sing that with me. For who beyond that gay green wood is waiting her way joy. And you notice the sky, I, joy, and Pomeroy are all elongated, the last syllable of it. Well, sky, I, and joy are all one syllable, but the last syllable of Pomeroy, the Roy, is elongated to extend out, to extend the vocals a little bit. We'll sing that one more time through. For who beyond that gay green wood is waiting And then the next line. Oh, who but her gallant Ramardine. Sing that with me. Oh, who but her gallant Ramardine. One more time. Oh, who but her gallant Ramardine. And the last part of that is On the mountains of Pomeroy. And sing that with me. On the mountains of Pomeroy. And one more time. On the mountains of Pomeroy. And we'll try that all together. Oh, who but a gallant ran a dain on the mountains of Pomeroy. I'm going to tell you something very important about this song whenever you're learning it. And I hear very, very good singers sing this song. And I've talked about pronunciation, where you should pronounce things whatever way your accent is, which is very true. There's pronouncing a word in your dialect, and then there's pronouncing a word regardless of dialect and pronouncing that word wrong. In this respect, it's not the word, it's the name. So this is a song from County Tyrone, Pomeroy's in County Tyrone, and where I'm from is just a couple of miles up the road from Pomeroy. So I know the way you say it, it is Pomeroy, but you will find certain singers, and be, probably because I'm so close, I live so close to the area, and it's a local song to me, I'm quite passionate about this one aspect of learning this song and singing this song, and that is that you don't break up Pomeroy with a vowel in the middle, you will have singers singing on the mountains of Pomeroy and that is wrong and it's a really big bugbear for me. I don't care how much I like the singer, I don't care how good a singer they are, if they are singing the mountains of Pomeroy they are singing the song wrong. It has nothing to do with dialect, it has nothing to do with pronunciation. And I believe everybody's interpretation is valid. But in terms of this one song, this is the exception which proves the rule of everybody's interpretation is valid. Because the way that you sing a song is the mountains of Pomeroy and not the mountains of Pomeroy. It's a very slight difference whenever you speak it. Mountains of Pomeroy and the mountains of Pomeroy. But it's a very big difference whenever you sing it correct way. On the mountains of Pomeroy. Incorrect way. 
on the mountains of Pomeroy. You're making a hash of it. I would say that it breaks, it puts too much of a break in it. Or people, instead of getting from Pom to Roy through ornamentation, they're adding an extra letter that's unnecessary. I think this whole thing just started because they learnt it wrong from somebody in the beginning and then that passed on. So you get really good singers singing the mountains of Pomeroy instead of the mountains of Pomeroy. All local singers to me that I've heard singing it, the exception of maybe a few younger singers, would all sing the mountains of Pomeroy because it's local to them and they know that's the way that you'd say it. So bear that in mind whenever you're learning this song. So we'll sing that one bit again. Oh, who put her gallant renner down on the mountains of Pomeroy? Oh, who but her gallant renner down on the mountains of Pomeroy? So we'll sing it through then, all together, with that added bit of ornamentation and uh, with the blades looking our eye. But so one, two, three. Oh, the day was a dawn and bright and fair. No lark sang in no sky. And the meat she bound her dark brown hair with a blade. So we'll sing that. Oh, the day was a dawn and bright and fair. No lark sang in the sky. And me she bound her dark brown hair with a blade lock in her eye. For who beyond that green wood is waiting her way joy oh who but her gallant ran her down on the mountains of Pomeroy so we're going to go on to the next bit. We're only going to break down two verses because it's quite a slow song. Two verses will help you get the rhythm. Once we've broken down those two verses, we'll sing them all together so you can sing along to that with me. So the next verse starts with full of off times in the twilight or full of times in the twilight brown. I think I sang in the start full often in the twilight hour, but it should really be full of times. So we'll start with that. So you know the drill by now. I sing the first part and then you sing with me. Full of times in the twilight hour. Sing that with me. Full of times in the twilight hour. One more time. Full of times in the twilight hour. And then the next part, full of times in the twilight brown. Sing that with me. Full of times in the twilight brown. And one more time, full of times in. No twilight brown. And we'll stick them together. So, one, two, three. Full of times in the twilight hour. Full of times in the twilight 
twilight brown. Excellent. So, moving on to the next bit. They met there in that Wallenberg. Sing that with me. They met there in that Wallenberg. And one more time. They met there in that Wallenberg. One more time. They met there in that Wallenberg. The next part of that. Where the streams come trickling. Sing that with me. Where the streams come trickling down. One more time. Where the streams come trickling down. Then we'll stick those two bits together. So, one, two, three. They met there in that Wadlinbower Where the streams come trickling down And one more time They met there in that Wadlinbower Where the streams come trickling So we'll stick those two sections that we've just learned together. So I'll run it through and then I want you to sing it through with me. Full of times in the twilight hour. Full of times in the twilight brown. They met there in that Wallenbauer, where the streams come trickling down. Okay, so why don't you sing that through with me? One, two, three. Full of times in the twilight hour, full of times. No twilight brown They met there in that Wadlinbauer Where the streams come trickling down We'll sing it through one more time and then we'll go on to the next part So, one, two, three Full of times in the twilight hour Full of times in the twilight brown They met there in that Wadlinbauer Where the stream Trickling down. Now, I'm saying in my accent, Tricklin, streams, uh, hour, but you might say hour, streams, and trickling. So you might sing, Full of times in the twilight hour, Full of times in the twilight brown they met there in that woodland bower where the streams come trickling down I just sing it the other way because that's my accent but don't feel like you have to sing it the way that I'm singing it 
as we learnt in lesson one, sing in your own accent. So if it is natural to you to sing woodland, streams and trickling, then sing woodland, streams and trickling. You shouldn't do impressions of other people. Just do your own thing. If we had been taught this song in primary school in the choir, we probably would have sang it woodland, streams and trickling. But in my accent it's woodland, streams and trickling. Sing it the way that you feel comfortable. Don't put on a voice. Definitely do not put on a voice. Worst thing that you can do is put on a voice. Just sing with your own voice. It'll sound a lot better, a lot more natural. So we'll go on to the next part. For they did have as true a love no man could e'er destroy. For they did have as true a love. Sing that with me. For they did have as true a love. One more time. For they did have as true a love. Next part. No man could ever destroy. Sing that with me. No man could ever destroy. One more time. No man could ever destroy. This is a very calm song, so whenever you're singing the majority of it, you're singing it in a calm tone. But for those higher parts, it's hard to sing those higher parts at a calm level, at a low volume. So that's where you should probably choose to bust up the volume a wee bit, just to help you get to those higher notes. It's easier to belt out a higher note than it is to sit and go. So if you can't do it at a low level, push it up to higher volume to get you to that higher pitch. So for example, for they did have a tree of love, no man could ever destroy. So I corrected it, come back down again. And a wee bit of tangent, if you think of it like this, you have in Greek an accent which is acute, which goes this way. In Irish we'd call it a fada. You then have the Scots Gaelic fada, which goes that way. They have these accents in ancient Greek as well. And they have another one, which is called a circumflex. And it denotes when the pitch of a syllable has to go up. And then, because what goes up must come down, it has to come down again. So, if you think of it like that, you're using a circumflex. So you're putting your volume up to reach the high note but the rest of the lyric isn't in a higher pitch so your volume has to come down because the higher note is only on a small section of the song so you're not going to keep going up so you have to bring it back down again so no man could ever destroy you should use your volume like ornamentation in the right places if you, if you want to print this out and where things like that happen, I will put a circumflex over it. You can write that down to help yourself if you're ever going through songs and you want to boost the volume but you, and you want to notate it somehow, put a wee circumflex over it. And that just means that, like gravity, what goes up must come back down again. That's a wee bit of a tangent of a lesson on that one line but we'll go on to the next part of that so we've got for they did have a true love no man could ever destroy and then we've got the very last part of that verse which is for no tyrants chains bound round sing that with me for no tyrants chains bound round more time. For no tyrants chains bound 
And the next part, on the mountains of Pomroy. And sing that with me. On the mountains of Pomroy. Excellent. So we'll sing that all together now. If you're finding it hard breathing, just break it up a wee bit um, because the notes run on for a very long time. So if you find target getting your breath and through the nose and through the mouth. Keep an inhaler handy if you're asthmatic. I'm asthmatic. Traditional singing has helped my asthma because I haven't needed my inhaler in years. And that's probably because I've needed to learn long phrases in one note. So one, two, three. Full of times in the twilight hour, full of times in the twilight brown, nay met there in that warland bower where the stream. Come trickling down For they did have As true a love No man can ne'er destroy For no tyrant's chains bound on the mountains of Pomeroy. Great stuff. So we'll go on to singing the two verses together. If you're if you are having trouble breathing, watch where I'm taking my breaths. I find it a wee bit challenging in places, but if I can get through it, then look at where I'm breathing on it, and then you'll get a sense of where you can breathe. Traditional singing isn't bad in terms of breathing either because it's unaccompanied so you're not following along to any music your breath doesn't have to be exact to follow along to any music you are unaccompanied so if you need to take a breath take a breath you're just trying to sing along to me so you might feel like you can't take a breath but if you're practicing it by yourself and the phrase is too long for you to sing just break it up because that's what i do that's what any traditional singer would do if you need to breathe breathing is very important just breathe we'll take it from the start and go on the bottom. So, one, two, three. Oh, the day was dawn and bright and fair. The lark sang in the sky. And me she bound her dark brown hair with a blaze look in her eye. For who beyond that gay green wood is we Full of times in the twilight hour, full of times in the twilight brown, they met there in that woodland bower where the stream. Come trickling down For they did have 
So you sang first two verses of that along with me. You can go back and sing that again and again. That strip back version with me. And then after that, just go on to the last two verses and sing those three. Because if you've got those, if you've got one of those verses, you'll get the rest of it. It's a very simple song and very easy to play around with. So that brings an end to the lesson part. We'll go on to the talk about section next. So for this talk about section something a bit different than the other talk about sections less complicated in a way i said in previous lessons that the best way that you can learn ornamentation is through listening to other singers ornament and through practicing yourself what i'm going to do for this talk about section is something completely different than i've done before in the lessons or any video that i've put up before and what i'm going to do is just sing songs one after the other if I can manage it without any mistakes and hopefully live in the moment of the song which is just as important to do. You sing completely differently whenever you're by yourself. That's maybe not been put across in these lessons or put across in the videos that I put up. So that's why for you to learn ornamentation you have to hear it and the only way that you're going to hear it is by looking at these references and by me just singing some songs and showing you examples of natu natural ornamentation of me just singing a song the way that I feel that it works. I'm just going to sing, I'm not going to introduce anything, I might talk in the middle at some points, I might edit out long gaps in between but for the most part it's just going to be flowing. It's just going to be a singing session with Davy Stewart for a couple of songs. And I feel like that's going to be a good way for you to learn is by listening to completely unaccompanied singing. When the two lovers met down beneath on green bay, when the two And every bower, every sweet rose and the flower reminds me of my memory from the banks of the Oh, don't stay too late on the highlands, my Mary. Don't stay too late on the highlands from Oh, little walls are notion 
As we parted at the evening, we were parting forever from the banks of the Lee. I loved her very dearly, so true and so sincerely. There was no girl in this wide world I loved better than she. Every bush and every bear, every sweet rose and flower reminds me of my Mary on the banks of the lea. I plucked for her some roses, some bloom Irish roses. I Plucked for her some roses, the finest ever grew, and I lay them on the grave of my own darling. For she sleeps in that graveyard Neath the earth and the dew I loved her very dearly So true and so sincerely there was no girl in this wide world I loved better than she. Every bush and every bayer, every sweet rose and flower. Reminds me of my memory and the banks of the lea. I am a bell young grenadier from the town of Marfeld. And the many's battle I have seen, and pistols I have held. I left my home in the eighty-eight, so full of joy and green. And now I'm on the road again to fight for the Queen. Well, my name it is young Charlie, and I sing as I do rove. I charm the birds of from the sky, and every glen and grove. I'll sit and talk to any man who proves good company. For I am like the very spring, all rosy, blithe and free. Of all the things that I have seen, of all the things I've done, I will admit to any man I've done it all with fun. For I'm young Charlie and I'll say 
whatever hand I am dealt. That I am a bell young grenadier from the time of Marufeld. Out up and galloping, out playing no ball. When the first he met, well, he both proper and tall. He was made fair and handsome and straight on each limb. There's a heart on my bosom who lies breaking for him. Oh, won't ye come with me At a small piece of that road To see my father's dwelling And the place of gold He could tell by her luck and Her language and me that he was by that she cherished most high. There's a spot in my father's garden, lovely Willie Crichie, where a lord's cheeks and a rose upon me and it's there whilst they sleep on their low beds of rest I'll go away lovely worldly you're the boy I love best uh, Father Ben of Esnan and Ambo she lay to hear the fond words that these lovers did see and with a sharp rapier he pierced her love through. And the innocent blood of her true love he drew. Well, the grave was got ready, lovely will he placed in. The mass it was chanted. To clean her soul of sin, and that so dearest father, ye may say as ye will, but the innocent blood of my true love be dead I will go from this land to some far country where I will know no one and no one know me and it's there I will wander till my last day For my own dear lovely worldly, he's a boy I loved best. One morning as I went to Fowlin, bright Phoebus down at the plain. And all 
goes down by the shades of Lockerin. I met with this wonderful dean. Her voice was so sweet and so pleasing. These beautiful notes she did sing. And the innocent foul of the forest Their love unto her they did bring Well, let it be in the first time I met her my heart did, did let we surprise And for I thought that she could be no mortal But an angel that fell from the skies Her hair it resembled Gold dresses, her cheeks were as white as the snow, and her lips were as red as two roses. That glimmer and locker and When I found that my love was loping, these words on to her I did say, Oh, take me at your habitation, for Cupid has led me astray. Oh, had I the lamp of great Abaddon, his rings and his gene I would more. I would part with them all for to win me, and live the round locker and show. Ah, um, last night there were four Marys, this night there's only three, there was Mary Beaton and Mary Satan and Mary Carmichael and me. And now came to the kitchen that I go through the that Mary Hamilton had a win to the highest man of them all. Oh, where is that win he had last night? Where is that win? Say, I had no win till last night. Never yet had a win today. Oh, they search a day and they search it and they searched below the day, and there he found his own dear win, a lion as cool as a clay. 
Last night there were four Marys. This night there's only three. There was Mary beaten and Mary sitting and Mary. My mother knew the night she cried me, the lands I was to travel on, are the death that I was to see. For all times I have dressed my queen, but gold all in her hair, and the little has been my reward, set the gallows in the square. For last night there were four Marys. This night there's only three. There was Mary beaten and Mary sitting and Mary. With my dog and gum through the blooming heather in search of past time I took my way when I espied a lovely fair one, this chance persuaded me a while to stay. I said, my darling, I own a Tell me your dwelling and your name also. Excuse my name and you'll find my dwelling near the mountain streams where no more cocks grow. I said, my darling, have you wed a rover? All former kings I will set aside. Here is my hand, and I pledge my honor. If you prove constant, I'll make you my bride. Oh, if my father knew I loved the Great affliction I would undergo. I'll stay at home 
for another season here. The streams where never cocks grow. Farewell to you and ancients and Amos go away. I'm leaving my native country yet. No dawn of no day. I'm going at the far off Cyprus. I knows from lands to um. I'll sing farewell to Anakun. Likewise, I'll sweet alone. My name is young Stanley Stewart, my age is twenty-one. I joined an Irish regiment and followed the Fife and Drum. I took the king's bright shilling and I crossed the ocean of foam. No more to see in my green clad hills of oh, lovely sweet room. Oh, oft I walk through Lancaster, all in my youth and prime, and oft I rose, leave gallion the breeze, and I plop the mountain time. Now nothing I'll see. But the scorching hills so distant from my home. I the lands I walked in childhood days of lovely sweet room. <coughs> Come all ye gallant Bright stout men, and listen unto me. Don't join with any regiment, or cross the wind dark seas. For in the land of oil and spice, You'll pine away for home. I, the land you walked in, child to days of lowly sweet home. Like me, you think on Anakun and Lowe. When she was nothing but sweet sixteen, we beauty chased and blooming oh. a little, little did she think at nineteen she began? For the playboy lads, the great three lads, but they're false and they're seeing no. For they'll curt all day, then go away and leave a lass 
Sigano. And if she had known what now she knows, and had on her mummy's button, oh, she wouldn't be sitting by the unfair side, singing hush a me burning, oh, and when she was not. Oh, when she was nothing but sweet sixteen, with beauty chased and blooming, oh, a hook little, little did she think at nineteen she'd be gone. For the ploughboy lads, they're great to we lads, but they're false and they're deceiving, oh. For they'll court all day, then go away, and leave a lassie gun, oh. And if she hadn't known what now she knows, and on her mummy's button, oh, she he wouldn't be sitting by the fireside, singing hush a by a burnie, oh. And it's hush a ba for in your ma, a hush a ba me burnie, oh. oh Hush a ba for I'm your ma, but the Lord knows who's your daddy, oh. So you're in the last part where I pull a couple of things from archive. It's not going to be anywhere near as long as the last one, thank goodness, says everybody. But I still have some very important things to show you. So the first thing that I've pulled from my archive is a vinyl record and it is this Chieftains album and it's an absolutely great find. That's Chieftains, Paddy Maloney, Michael Tuberty, Sean Potts, Martin Fay, David Fallon and you should be able to get that on iTunes. It's nice to hear vinyl records but you can just hear remaster versions on iTunes and you can probably get it on YouTube as well. I'm pretty sure you can. It's got slow airs and jigs and hornpipes and stuff on it as well. No singing at all, I believe. Oh no, it does have singing on it. I'm a liar. Yes, it does have singing on it. So it's got a wee bit of everything on it. And it's Chieftains, so it's good, classy, traditional stuff. High calibre, traditional stuff. This is in the vein of last week. Just a flash through of certain books. But a very quick one. So if you were interested whenever I recommended... One of the other archive sections I recommended reading uh, Tom Bukunya and these are some other quick books that I'm going to fly up in front of your face and recommend them as well. I'm not sure if you'll be able to get some of them in modern paperbacks but I'm pretty sure you'd be able to find the majority of them online on an eBay and stuff like that or an Oxfam website or Etsy, try those places and I'm sure you'd be able to find cheap copies of them somewhere. So the first one is Irish Sagas, which is a great book. It's edited by Miles Dillon and it's got a whole pile of different writers in it. And it's essays about traditional Irish sagas. So it says in back, in Ireland, as in Wales, poetry and legend are the substance of the literature. And these essays will serve as an introduction to the prose tales of ancient Ireland. So this is a good accompaniment to Tom McCullough. And it's also a good accompaniment to these other books. So we have Harrop edition, a very cheap edition. You should definitely be able to find this on eBay somewhere or probably even a PDF download link through an archive that's digitised it somewhere. But it is The High Deeds of Finn. And it's got great illustrations in it by a famous artist called Stephen Reid black and white versions of them but there were originally colour illustrations and if you google Stephen Reid illustrations 
you will find the colour versions of those knocking about and they're great colour versions. So this is a great book about the Fenian cycle and a Fenian was and is the Irish word for warrior. Finn McCool was one of the Fenian warriors. Uh, today it's become sort of like a bad word. To people who actually know what the word is, um, it's not a bad word. It's only the intent behind the word that makes it bad. So this is stories from that cycle. In the same way that the Tombacunya follows the Ulster cycle, this is the Fenian cycle. And it's absolutely fantastic book. And yes, so have a look out for that. And tells stories of Finn McCool and Dermot and Grania and Children of Lear. Just good Irish stories. So that's a good book to have. And another one which you'll be able to find easily on Amazon is this very battered copy of Early Irish Myths and Sagas. Penguin's Classic. You'll be able to pick that up very, very easily on Amazon. And the translations by Geoffrey Gantz. It was very straightforward. Hard to get through sometimes. Sometimes, not always. Um, but it's still a great book to have and follows stories from the Ulster Cycle as well and more stories about Hugh Cullen. Whereas this is about Finn McCool for the most part. This is about Hugh Cullen. And then the next book we have is Tales of the Elders of Ireland. And it is a new translation of A Callum na Shurimach. Might be A Callum na Shurimach by Anne Dooley and Harry Rowe and it's an Oxford World's Classics edition. Oxford World Classics editions are always cheaper than Penguin and that's a good thing to bear in mind. So you often find a cheaper copy in an Oxford Classic edition rather than in a Penguin edition. The translation will be different of course but the core story is the same so it's worth it. And if you don't like the translation you can try and go for a Penguin uh, edition but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that it'll be a better translation but it will guarantee that it will be a more expensive edition and for the most part of the stuff that I have uh, in terms of Greek ancient Greek research and ancient Greek translations I have all Oxford editions I don't have Penguin editions of anything apart from the Odyssey the only Penguin editions I have are old like this old penguin copy of Tacitus on Imperial Rome. Don't really have anything else. Yeah, so great book to have. Look out for that. The last one is this, and you'll be able to find it on eBay, this copy. It's sprung from the same Oxford editions that I was talking about last week, whenever I was talking about the Iliad and the Oxford, with those illustrated Oxford editions. This is in the same vein, and it's Irish sagas and folk tales. And you'll be able to find that if you type in Irish Sagas and Folk Tales Oxford Edition. Even Kittle Monroe, because I think Kittle Monroe illustrated this as well. Yeah, Kittle Monroe illustrated this as well as the Iliad and the Odyssey Oxford Editions that I have. But she also does Welsh, I think she does Austrian, Russian Folk Tales. Oxford released a series of these Folk Tales Sagas things for different nationalities. And they're all colour co coordinated. There was the blue, black and white classical look for the Odyssey, the black, uh, orange and slight hints of white classical look for the Iliad. This is green and white for the Irish folk tales. I think the Austrian one is yellow. The Scottish one is purple and green. But yeah, all of the illustrations are always matched then in that colour palette. And this is a great translation of those stories. So there's a small version of the Cattle Raid of Cooley in it. Each chapter is headed with various black and white illustrations. And this is a more generic cover of all Irish sagas and folk tales. Maybe remember last week where we I had that little book, Ossian's Poems. And this is about uh, Mother of Ossian, or Mother of Ossian. Ossian's proper name. Ossian's the twisted version of it. And another full colour illustration. Great illustrations, great book, very easy to find on eBay because I've come across it whenever I'm searching for other things. And cheap as well. The last thing I have in this folklore sort of legendarium vein is this book published by, I'm not sure who the publishers are of this. It is Stories from South East by 
Angus McClellan and translated by John Lauren Campbell who was a great folk collector. This stems from Scots Gaelic so these are Scots Gaelic stories. So there's a big uh, emphasis in the Outer Hebrides of the Fenian cycle as well and Finn McCoodle so they have stories in Scots Gaelic as well of the, that vein and they have Ossianic tales of their own in Scots Gaelic so whenever the Ossian poems were made. I think it was stemmed out of that culture to the west of the country of Scotland, to the Western Islands. It stemmed from that. But the originals are here translated by John Lorne Campbell uh, from stories told by Angus McClellan. It's a great book to have. It's got some of those stories and then other stories more about those places. It's great. So the last thing I have to show you is the Holy Grail. It's not to do with legends or anything like that, but it is the holy grail of traditional song. The Sam Henry Songs of the People book. And I don't look at this as much as I should, or not as much as I should, as much as I could look at it, uh, because there's a lot of great stuff in it. Sam Henry was a folk song collector who went around Northern Ireland collecting folk songs. So the songs of the people are typically Ulster songs collected from the people of Ulster in the north of Ireland. And this book is absolutely great. It is an absolutely massive book. It's broken up into different sections with different subcategories and things like that at the back, which you can look at. At the heading for the majority of them, not all of them, but the majority of them is a musical notation. So if you can read music, which I can't, um, you can look at that. I normally look at the words for a bit of inspiration. If I really like it, I might look it up to see if there's been any versions done of it so that I can learn the tune. I might put it to a different tune. But you find a lot of songs that are similar to one another. that have clearly stemmed out of one another. But it's just a great piece of folklore history. And is a must for yourself if you're considering going down the route of looking into traditional singing properly and looking into traditional singing that is focused on the singing of people from this island, especially from the region that I'm in, which is Ulster. So if you want that, I would seriously go out and get it. It might cost you a wee bit. I can't remember how much it cost me, but it was worth every penny. And I always find new things whenever I, I get it down off the shelf. I have a flip through it. Sometimes it's easy to Google things. But where Google draws a blank, normally songs of the people will get it in one, absolutely in one, every time. So it's an excellent book to have. And BBC did a programme about Sam Henry, which you might be able to get online, just about his, his song collecting and the people he collected from. And it was absolutely fantastic documentary. Have a look out for that and have a look out for this book, because it will definitely help you on your journey of traditional singing. So that draws an end to this episode, episode four. We've only got two more lessons left and then that's us. And thank you for joining me. I'll see you next week. This is the last lesson going to be sponsored by Gas Yard Vela. So I want to thank them very much for appreciating what I'm trying to do and sponsoring the first four. Whenever they didn't have to sponsor any at all. Um, so thank you very much to them. And thank you to the good work that they do in general with people in the arts so thank you and i will see you next week have fun with that sing song at the start have fun with that wee session in the middle have fun with those books and have fun with the rest of the lessons so thank you very much